Hello, and welcome to Canadian Rights Reviews, where we examine the ins and outs of Canadian rights, freedoms, laws, and policies. Today's video comes to us from the channel of Davin Charney. Mr. Charney is an attorney in the Toronto area and originally created this video for the Centre for Police Accountability. When do I have to ID? is the most asked question regarding dealing with police. I have addressed this in several videos but it is time we answered this question on its own. I have been looking for a while for an online resource that clearly details the correct answer to this question. Mr. Charney's video is the closest I have found that provides a complete answer. It is slightly lacking, so we will chime in when needed. The issue that uh, I'll be discussing in this video uh, is to answer the question of whether or not you have to show identification to the police uh, when they ask you to do so. And uh, generally speaking, the answer to that is no. There's no obligation on the part of people to show identification to police uh, when asked to do so. The police, of course, can ask a person to show ID. What I'm suggesting is that a person can exercise their right to refuse. And uh, the, that opinion is based on uh, Canadian court decisions, uh, the common law, as well as the Charter of Rights. And in the Charter of Rights, there's uh, specifically two rights that I think are important uh, that are expressly mentioned in the Charter, the right to be free from uh, arbitrary detention, and also the right to be free from unreasonable search and seizure. Uh, and although not expressly mentioned in the Charter, uh, it's been read in by court, uh, courts in Canada that we have the right to remain silent. So if you're having an interaction with police and they're asking you to provide identification, you can assert those three different rights. Also, there's a useful court decision coming out of a court in Alberta. Uh, and it's the case of R.V. Onorowski, and you can follow the link below uh, to find that decision. But it specifically addresses this issue of, do you have to show ID to the police? And that court, uh, the Alberta court, in that decision uh, says that uh, generally you do not have to, and it cites a previous case, a British uh, case, uh, Rice and Connolly. And this case of Rice and Connolly has been cited uh, not only by that uh, case, but by other Canadian cases to establish the principle uh, that you don't have to generally show ID to the police. And I'll just give you a quick quote from the Rice and Connolly decision. So in that case, a judge said, it seems quite clear to me that though every citizen has a moral, a moral duty, if you like, a social duty to assist the police, there is no legal duty to that effect. And indeed, the whole basis of the common law is that right of the individual to refuse to answer questions put to them by persons in authority. So generally, you don't have to provide identification when asked by the police. However, there are some circumstances where the law would require you to show identification. So what are those specific uh, circumstances? Firstly, if you're engaged in a regulated activity, sometimes the regulations would suggest that you do have to show ID. So for example, if you're crossing the border, you'll have to show ID. If you're driving, there's uh, various provincial uh, statutes that would require you to show uh, identification in the form of a license. If you're in a restricted movie, you may have to show ID in order to establish you are of age to be in that movie. And similarly, if you're consuming alcohol, you may have to show ID to purchase alcohol or to be in, in an establishment that uh, uh, dispenses alcohol uh, in order, you have to show ID in order to establish that you're of age. Uh, so regulated activities, sometimes you will have to show identification to the police. For regulated activities, the only one you absolutely have to show ID for, is driving. Driving may or may not include riding a bicycle depending on your province. For other regulated activities mentioned such as crossing the border, buying alcohol and entering a restricted movie, you are not required to show ID. However, if you do not, you will not be able to cross the border, buy alcohol, or get in to see the movie. If asked for ID while drinking, or already in an age-restricted place, that falls under a potential violation of law, which is covered later. Uh, another exception is if the police approach you and they've found you committing some type of provincial offense, you'll have to identify yourself or you could be charged criminally with obstruct police. So this is an important point, I think, because you don't want to be found by the police 
uh, committing a provincial offense and then if you refuse to ID yourself all of a sudden you are charged with a criminal offense which is much more serious. So if the police are telling you that they found you trespassing or jaywalking or committing uh, some type of liquor offense, for example having liquor in a public place or uh, you're riding your bike without a horn or a, um, or a light and the police want to give you a ticket for that, you should show identification uh, or the consequence of not doing that, as I mentioned, is you could be charged and convicted of obstruct police. And there's a Supreme Court of Canada decision, R.V. Moore, it's a 1979 decision. You can also find a link to that decision below. Uh, and in that case, Mr. Moore was riding his bike, committed some infraction. Police wanted to give him a ticket and he refused to identify himself and he was charged and eventually convicted uh, of obstruct police. This section is lacking in both scope and clarity. There is a belief that police can only demand ID in such cases, if they have decided to issue a ticket or summons. Further Mr. Charney has limited the scope of this section to provincial offenses. In the case of R.V. Onorowski, previously mentioned by Mr. Charney, there is a section that is very relevant that was not addressed. That portion of the ruling stated, there is a duty upon individuals to provide their name to peace officers upon demand, the breach of which will constitute obstruction, is limited to situations in which the requesting peace officer has, as a result of seeing the individual commit some act, reasonable and probable grounds to believe that that individual has committed an offense. If a peace officer has reasonable and probable grounds to believe an accused has committed an offense, but that belief is based on information other than the peace officer seeing the accused commit the offense, such as, information from third parties, or information obtained from physical evidence, then a failure by an individual to provide his or her name upon demand of the peace officer, does not constitute an obstruction. In layman's terms, if an officer sees you commit an offense with their own eyes they can demand ID. There is no language here of having to arrest you first. If they are investigating you for an offense based on any other evidence other than personally witnessing it, then you are not required to show ID unless they are issuing a ticket, summons, or placing you under arrest. Personally witnessing a potential crime, would include a demand for ID while engaged in age-regulated activities, unless you are clearly well beyond the minimum age. While our Vionorowski was a provincial ruling, this is relevant case law Canada-wide, including in the application of the Federal Criminal Code, have sent a more recent contrary ruling, which I could not find. Uh, now, a third scenario where you'll probably want to show identification to the police or, or identify yourself is if you're arrested. Now, again, if you're, if you're arrested and the police want to charge you, if you don't identify yourself, firstly, you could be further charged with obstruct police. But also, uh, you could also you could be held in custody uh, pending a determination of who it is you are. The police will not want to release you from custody if they don't know who you are. So in that situation, if you're arrested, you probably want to tell the police your name and your date of birth and your address in order to secure your release. Now, two very important things to remember when dealing with the police. Uh, firstly, never lie to the police. Again, you could be charged with obstruct police for lying. Um, uh, but uh, so it's all much better to assert your right to remain silent uh, instead of uh, lying to the police. Generally speaking, bad idea to lie to the police. Also, when interacting with the police, you should uh, remain, I think it's in your best interest to remain respectful and polite, but assert your rights to the full extent. And that way, you, if you're respectful and polite, full, you can avoid escalating the situation beyond your control. Um, I think it's important to assert our rights. If we don't assert our rights, then there's really no point in having rights. Thank you for watching, and we hope to see you again soon.